All right, guys, welcome to your second online class. If you're in the 2019-2020 school year, if not, this is just supplemental for you guys going forward. Um, today we're going to do lesson 10.2, lines tangent to a circle. Our essential question today, and this is going to be a brief lesson, is how is a tangent line related to the radius of a circle at the point of tangency? So now we've got two new words today, tangent line and point of tangency. A tangent line is a line that intersects the circumference of a circle at only one point. It's very hard to draw, so we're going to rely heavily on mathematical proof for that because I'm not good enough at drawing, and if you consider the number of points, an infinite number of points on the circumference of a circle, and an infinite number of points making up a line, we're going to have to heavily rely on the Pythagorean theorem today to prove whether or not the line intersects your circumference at one and only one point. So again, a tangent line only touches the circle, the circumference of the circle once and only once. And that is called the point of tangency. That is that singular point where both the line and the circumference of the circle intersect. Right now you've got Bellwork, and the Bellwork says construct, which means to draw a circle with a radius of six and an intercepted arc created by a central angle of 45 degrees. Label that arc AC. We need to find the length of the arc. So let's switch over to smooth draw. Actually, you go ahead and pause the video, solve this, and then come back to the video and see if you got it right. So we have a circle. Let's make sure we've got our pen on. Yep. And we have a radius of six. And we need a 45 degree angle. And this intersects A and C. So we're trying to find the length of this minor arc right here. Now we know to find the arc length when we want just a portion of it, it's n over 360 times their circumference. And again, n over 360 represents that portion of the circle. So here n is 45 degrees, right? We want 45 of the 360 degrees for this. And what is our radius? I'm going to go ahead and make that substitution now. That is 6. So now we have a few things we can do. We can go ahead first and do 2 times 6, which will give me 12 pi. We're going to want to leave this in terms of pi. It's just easier to work with, and it gives us an exact answer instead of a rounded answer, since we can never actually use all of pi. So now from here, I'm going to say I have 45 over 360 times 12 pi. Remember that 12 pi is the same as 12 pi over 1. And since we're multiplying, we can multiply straight across. So I'm going to have 45 times 12 over 360. I'm going to go ahead and leave times pi over here, since we're going to leave it in terms of pi. 45 times 12 is 540 over 360 times pi. Now I know 540 and 360 are both divisible by 180. 540 divided by 180 is 3, and 360 divided by 180 is 2. So the arc length, remember this means length, and that's the symbol for an arc. So arc AC is 3 halves pi long. Now what if I wanted the area? Well. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's do the area in blue. Oh, that's green. So now we're going to find the area of this whole section here. Well, it's actually pretty much the same steps, except for now we're working in two dimensions. So we're going to have n over 360 times pi r squared, right? That's the area formula, and this is the portion of the area that we want. So again, we have 45 over 360 times pi. And what is my r again? 6. So 6 squared. We have 45 times 360 times 36 pi. 45 times 36 is 1620 over 360 times pi. Now let's see if three, uh, 1620 is divisible by 360. It is not. I do not like this calculator. Is 1620 divisible by 180? Yes. 
So what we're going to have here is both of these numbers are divisible by 180. We're going to have 9 halves pi. So that is the area. And this is the length of AC. Let's talk about this diagram. So a tangent to the circle is a line in the plane of the circle that intersects the circle in exactly one point. That's kind of what I said on the last screen. And that point where those two intercept, that is the circumference and the line, is called the point of tangency. So A and B are both points of tangency, but line AC and line BC are tangent lines. So a couple things to notice, or that you should know as well already. The radius is always equal to every other radius in a circle. So the radii are always equal. So from B to the center is equal in length from the center to A. Also, we would know that the center point through here, line C, let's call this R for now. RC is always congruent to RC on this top triangle and bottom triangle by the reflexive property. Oops, sorry, that was a calculator. So now, if I know that I have two right angles which are always congruent, the radii which are always congruent, and RC which is always congruent to RC. I can say that these two triangles are congruent by the hypotenuse leg theorem. Some people may want to go with um, ASS, but we know we can't spell bad words in the class, or SSA which is a bad words backwards, so we can't go with that. But since these are right triangles, we can say they're congruent by the hypotenuse leg theorem. That's one really important thing to take away from this is if we have uh, tangent lines or and points of tangency we can start constructing triangles and one of the nice things about these triangles is they're always right triangles so we're going to rely heavily on the Pythagorean theorem for this one so go ahead and copy this down the theorem is much more important than the converse in class when we were together we're going to we would cover both of these and just show that they're true both ways but since we are online and I'm trying to keep the video short you really only need the theorem so go ahead and pause it copy down the theorem so we can start using it on the next slide. So right now it wants to know, is the line segment KJ tangent to circle P at J? So again, this is the line segment KJ. We want to know is that tangent to the circle with center at P, that's this right here, at point J. So all it's asking basically is, is KJP a right angle? Because if it is a right angle, then J exists on both the circumference of the circle and the line segment only at point J. If it's not a right triangle, it'll intersect more than once. So let's switch over to smooth draw again. Let's get a copy of that in there. And let's actually look at what we're going to do here. All right, so we have this uh, triangle in this circle and we're trying to see whether or not J is a point of tangency. Oops, let's put the uh, correct stuff on here. So we want to know is KJP a right angle? Well, the easiest way to prove whether or not we have a right triangle on our hands is to use the Pythagorean theorem. And that is, of course, as we've been doing all year, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And since I want this to be my right angle, this would have to be side C. Now, I want to show you something that for most of you is going to be pretty obvious, and that's the length of KP. But to kind of support it with proofs that we've done, let's call this R. And I need to know, well, if I know that KR is equal to 4 and RP is equal to 6, then what is KP? Well, the segment addition postulate tells us if one line segment ends at a point and then the next one continues at that same point, I can just take the two, the initial starting point and the initial end point and add them together. So KP, the length of KP is equal to the length of KR plus the length of RP and that means that KP is the same as 4 plus 6, which is 10. So I can go ahead and say that this whole line segment is 10. 
So now all we have to do is actually set up the Pythagorean theorem and see if it's a true statement. If it's a true statement, then this is, then J is the point of tangency. If it's not a true statement, then we do not have a tangent line. KJ is not tangent to circle P. So since I know this has to be my C, I'm gonna go ahead and put 10 squared here. We know A and B are interchangeable as long as they're the actual legs and not the hypotenuse of the triangle. So I'm gonna go ahead and put nine squared plus six squared. It's gonna give me 81 plus 36 equals 100. Well, 117 does not equal 100. So no, J is not the point of tangency. So since this is not a right triangle, this is not a right angle, so J cannot be the point of tangency. If we were able to zoom in really close, we would see that KJ intersects circle P at more than one point. And that's really all we're doing over and over again today for this lesson. Let's do some uh, light proofs here using uh, our angle side, angle, angle, angle side, 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 angle side, or hypotenuse-like theorems. Just to kind of show you how these relationships end up unfolding when we have more than one tangent line through a the same circle. So YZ and XZ are tangents to the circle. What is the relationship between YZ and XZ? So basically it's asking you, are YZ and XZ congruent? Are they perpendicular? Are they parallel? Some of those are easier to rule out than others. XZ and YZ are definitely not parallel. If we wanted to, we could find the slope of the lines. If we put this on a coordinate plane and prove that they're not, we are far enough along in geometry now to know that you can't trust your eyes. But this is kind of a gut feeling that those aren't parallel because we can clearly see that they intersect. Are they perpendicular? No. We can trust our gut on that one too. Again, if you want to prove it, put it on a coordinate plane, show that they're not. But what else can we say about YZ and XZ? Well, let's actually look at that. So since TX and TY are both radius of T, they are congruent. That's fair, right? The radius are all radii of a circle are congruent to each other. So right now, we've kind of already started a pretty easy proof here. And, we, and the fact that if we're trying to show congruency or anything, we already have an angle and a side that are corresponding to each other. And that just means if I were to reflect across the line ZT, X would land on Y, and everything would come together nicely showing symmetry, which apparently is obviously the next step in this little proof. We're gonna draw line TZ. Now, we know from topic seven that ZT and TZ are always congruent. If I separate these two triangles now, X, ZT, and Y, ZT, they will both have line segment ZT, and ZT or TZ is always congruent to itself. So right now, we have an angle, a side, and a side in both triangles that are corresponding and congruent. So by the hypotenuse leg theorem, we can say these two are corresponding. And remember, CP, CTC, it's not cool people can teach calculus. That's just how we remember it. That is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That's just how you end every proof of congruency by saying the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And we've shown the three criteria for the hypotenuse leg theorem. And that is really quick just to recap. Your first question when we're trying to solve these is, do we have a right triangle? Absolutely. Do we have congruent hypotenuse? Well, opposite of Y is ZT, opposite of X is ZT. ZT is always congruent to itself. So yes, our hypotenuse are congruent. And do we have a set of corresponding congruent legs? Well, YT and XT, if I were to folded along this line of symmetry would correspond to each other and they are marked congruent. So we definitely have a pair of corresponding congruent legs. So this is true by the hypotenuse leg theorem. We would not say ASS because we don't use any bad words in this class and we wouldn't say SSA because we don't say bad words backwards either. All right, if two segments with a common endpoint exterior to a circle are tangent to the circle, then the segments are congruent. That is just showing you that ZX and ZY is always congruent. This is just the theorem for it. We did the proof first this time, and now we're back to the circle. So AB and AC are congruent. This is gonna be a huge help on your SATs. 
Uh, those of you that are going into Algebra 2 next year, that is your last class that's going to really set you up for your SATs. These are the number one questions students come back to me and say, hey, I don't remember this, or I didn't learn this, or I forgot about it. Please help me with these questions. The SAT loves their circle questions from what I see every time I help someone. This is primarily what they come for. So keep little things like this in mind now, and always come back and see me next year if you have any questions. Here's your recap. I'll let you pause there and copy it down. The next three slides, we're going to work on a couple of the homework problems. So here we go. I went ahead and put the right answers in already. So don't just copy them down. Let's actually talk about why they are. So this is one of those identify the student error problems. Um, I really like these. Um, students usually don't like them. And then when they see me next year, they go, you know, Doing these types of problems really helped me on the EOC because it helped me explore what I was thinking. So let's do these. Segments DF, DH, and GF are tangents to the circle. So luckily they've given us that all three of these exterior lines are all tangent at point G, H, and E. Andrew was asked to find DF. So they went the full length of this line. They went from here to here. Explain Andrew's error. So Andrew said to find that full length DF, we take DE plus EF. I would agree with that. That's the segment addition postulate. By the segment's tangent to a circle theorem, DE is equal to DF. Well, that's not quite true, is it? According to this, it's the ones exterior that are on the same one. So that's actually going to be ED and DH are congruent, whereas EF and FG are congruent. So with his mistake, we're not going to follow through on that anymore. What we're actually going to do now is pick up the correct uh, line of reasoning from here on out. So the theorem, he did not apply the theorem correctly. The theorem says DE is equal to DH. So we know that this is 6. And GF is equal to EF. So this is going to be 8 here. So now with the segment addition postulate, I would say 6 plus 8 is equal to 14. There's going to be a couple more problems like this on your homework and you can definitely count on something like this being on your test. Oh, put that one in backwards, didn't I? All right. Prove the following theorem. Yes, we are back to a lot of flow proofs and two column proofs here. And this is going to be full your homework's full of proofs, so I'm going to knock out two of them for you. If AB if line AB so that means it continues forever is perpendicular to radius CP at P, was that the wrong problem? Oh no, then AB is tangent to C. So this is your proof and you're given a separate circle. Classic Pearson here, but we're gonna move on. Sorry for my confusion. I don't know why they were setting you up with one question and then giving you a parallel to it, but that's fine. This is part of the reading comprehension part of your EOC that I always talk about. Be ready for curveballs like this. All the rules still apply, so let's do it. Given line segment QR is perpendicular to N, prove N is tangent to circle Q at R. So here's my radius QR, and we know line N is perpendicular. They've even were nice enough to give us that symbol there to tell us that QRN is a 90 degree angle. They gave us a hint, which is kind of what we would naturally do, right? S is any other point on the line N that is not R. And this is where the definition of point of tangency comes into play. There is only one point, and that's at R, where the circle and the line coexist. So any other point, even if I move a micron to the right, a micron to the left, is going to give me a right triangle. It's going to be a very small right triangle, but it will create a right triangle. So let S be any other point on the line, exactly kind of like we said. QRS is, and then your drop-down option is right, scalene, or isosceles. Of course, we're going to choose right because we have a right angle here, and S can be anywhere on this line other than R. So even if I went here, I would have a very steep right triangle, but I still have a right triangle. All right. Now, we have to start playing with stuff in our mind here, so let's bring this over so we're not doing this completely blind. Oop, did not want to do that. Sure. 
sure. Okay. So it says let S be any other point. I'm going to arbitrarily pick a point on the line. This doesn't mean you would have to pick the same point, but we're going to call that S. Since QS is opposite, and this is why I wanted to write it so you guys can actually see it. I'm going to go ahead and create the line segment from Q to S, and we're going to do a little better than that. I'm uh, going to say that's okay. It kind of turns at the end. Since QS is the side opposite the right angle, well, that's definitely true. Here's my right angle, and that's my opposite side. It is the hypotenuse. By definition, the hypotenuse is opposite the right angle, and the longest side, QS, well, always, well the hypotenuse is always the longest side, and we can see QS is the hypotenuse, so QS must be greater than QR. Since QR is the radius of the circle, and all radii of the circle are the and all radii of the same circle are congruent. We know that. We've said it multiple times in this video. We've been saying it since topic nine. Um, S lies outside of the circle, right? Because R, point R, let's go in a different color. This point right here is the only point on the line and on the circle. So then that means S must be outside of the circle because it can't be inside if R is the only point that touches the circle. All right. It's a lot of reading in this one. Uh, that's why I've been warning you guys all year. The end of this class is really just a big reading check. Okay. Let's move this one over. I think it's going to be faster just to knock it out and smooth draw. Let's go new. Man, same mistake twice in one video. No. All right. In the figure to the right, if AC is 17, so let's go ahead and mark that up. And BC is 14. What is the radius? Well, they were very generous to us on this this question because BA is the radius. And they were nice enough to show us we have a right triangle, so that point B is the point of tangency. So all we really need to do is the Pythagorean theorem, where 17 is C. So I'm going to have 14 squared plus B squared equals 17 squared. Uh, 14 times 14 is 196. That one I should know. 17 squared is 289. 289 minus 196 is 93. So now I know B squared, or my radius, is 93. But I need just B, so I'm going to take the square root. And it wants to know to the nearest tenth. So we're going to do the square root of 93. And that's going to tell me that B equals 9.64. So I'm going to use this 4 to determine my rounding. And that's going to leave me B equals 9.6. All right, this is what your homework is going to look like um, tonight, guys. So if you have any questions, make sure you come into the Zoom meeting for the last 30 minutes of class if we're doing the online. If you're watching this past the 2019-2020 school year, ask me in class when I see you again. All right, have a good one.